Hey everyone, today we are going to be tearing down Vega 56, the cheapest current version of Vega at $400. This is the reference card from AMD. I need to put thermal couples on it for thermal testing. So we're going to take this apart and see if there's any difference between this Vega FE and Vega 64, for which we already have board shots. And as a note, I'm shooting this one alone because I gave Andrew the weekend off. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by CableMod. Already well known for their work in custom sleeved power supply cables, CableMod is now venturing into liquid cooler tube sleeving with their new AIO sleeving kits, compatible with Corsair and NZXT as of now. Check the link in the description below for more information. All right, so here's what we're gonna add to this thing, a bunch of thermocouples and probes. And we need to get the back plate off first, which looks like it's attached just with Phillips this time. So this is a departure from the Torx screws we saw on Vega Frontier Edition, which used TR6 and TR5. Instead, this one is just using standard larger sized Phillips screws. And there are one, two, three, four, six of these for the back plate. They're actually kind of longer screws, as you can see. And then we have four more to get out of there for the retention kit, for the cooler. Look at the cooler on the other side, see if it's another vapor chamber. And aside from that, there are going to be some in the shroud on the outside. I'm not sure if they're Torx or not. They were Torx on FE. We'll see if they're Torx here. Okay, there's the back plate. It is actually a fairly solid back plate in terms of just construction. It's not plastic, it's metal. Now, does that matter? Well, it depends on what it's connected to. And this one is, I mean, it's just, it, this may be more for looks than anything like a lot of the back plates. Some of them actually do have a thermal benefit, but not all of them do. Anyway, that's off, so we'll worry about that more once we're doing thermal testing, see if we can do some AB on it. Next thing I want to do, actually, before get going there, is removing the shroud. So this is going to be done by taking out one, two, three, four, five, six screws here. And then I think we also have to take some out of the I.O. cover towards the back of the card. I'm going to separate these on our project mat. There's that Radeon logo. We've got two eight pins on here on Vega 56. And we'll be testing power draw in the review. Obviously, I haven't done it yet. If you are curious about power draw, be sure to check that review. OK, now that we're getting into the more sensitive parts of the card, I am going to be putting on an anti-static wrist strap just because of all the ways to damage a review component. Static electricity is one of the stupider ones. And although it is less common of a problem with all the protection these things have these days, it's still not something you want to do. Backside, all right. So here we've got a couple of screws on the back. We have one, two, three, four, five, we have six. The two over here are the ones that secure the back plate to, I believe, the base plate, or at least the shroud, and then the other ones are just for the I.O. So I'm going to start with the two up here. These are all Phillips still. Thermal paste on my hands. Or Sharpie. We know how much you all like dry erase markers. This is what happens when you're working alone. There's less pressure to, to perform, I suppose. So just start throwing things everywhere. And we do like to leave those kind of silly mistakes and just, I mean, one, it's entertaining, and two, it's just realistic. No point in trying to make everything look like it's completely flawless because the reality is it probably won't be for most people taking these things apart. Before anyone gets confused, these things here, these smaller uh, screws, we'll call them, in the corners, those aren't real. You don't have to take those out. They are plastic. Uh, they're for show only. So don't try and remove those because they won't go anywhere. I need to pull this off. Uh, first of all, before, before doing that, right here, there's a little switch there. 
And that switch, as many of you know, is a toggle for BIOS. So they have dual BIOS on here, which is actually a really nice feature for a reference card. That means if you wanted to flash it, you've got a backup. Never flash both. That's Don't do that. Do not do that. Uh, so looking the same as FE in terms of that, we got to get in further to figure out the rest. Does that say warranty void? Warranty void if removed. You know, I wish these companies would, would just stop with those stickers for philosophical reasons. A lot of them do it, not all of them do it. It is becoming less common, fortunately, with some of the vendors. They're, they're kind of learning. But uh, we're not going to, does it say removed or tampered? Removed. Oh, well, fortunately, we're not removing it, are we? <laughs> We're going through it. I don't know why there's a screwdriver-shaped hole in this sticker. It came that way. I, I would never open one. I don't. I wouldn't even know where to begin with opening a video card. That's what you tell them, right? All right. So there's the uh, all the retention stuff off. Now we can. Will the shroud separate yet, or do we need to remove the get the base plate loosened? There are no more screws in the shroud. And we're not separating. So I think we are actually, oh wait, there's there's a screw on the top side, isn't there? Aha, a sneaky screw right there. Up here in the corner. Okay. I don't think that's gonna really change anything. We still need to take the, other screws out. These are for the base plate. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of these, plus that one hidden on each side, so twelve that we have to remove, I think. Okay, that's the fan we've just taken out. These three right here. Those are for the fan, which on FE was a Delta fan, and it looks the same here, that one right there. It's obviously loose now. So let's get that the rest of the way out. That is all the screws. So we need to separate the thermal pads like that. This is starting to look pretty familiar. Two cables, one for an LED, one for, I think an LED, one for the uh, the fan. Okay, so let's start looking this board over. On the back side, we have right here the voltage controller. And that controller, is it the same as FE? IR35217. That is. It's the exact same as FE. So they're using the same voltage controller on here, and I'll bet they're using the same VRM as well. Okay, so here's the PCB. It looks pretty familiar. And there's a reason for that. If you saw our Vega Frontier Edition coverage and PCB analysis, looks like it's pretty much going to apply here. We have the same voltage controller. These are the same MOSFETs. Is it the same count of them? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. So we're still 12 phase. These right here, it's an L-shaped VRM, which helps with propagation delays. And we're able to do that because there's no DDR surrounding the chip. It's all just HBM. So that means you can get this closer. But anyway, it's still 12 phase. It's the same VRM as the Frontier Edition. If you saw our Frontier Edition analysis, you can apply that here. This is Vega 56. The fact that this has the same VRM, which is a pretty damn good VRM, well, it's absolutely one of the better reference cards we've seen, especially with a dual bio switch. The fact this is on here means this is a very expensive card for AMD to make considering it's got HBM2, a high-end VRM, and they're using it in FE, which should pretty much show where it stands. So this probably, well, this absolutely is in 64 as well. We've seen it. So same VRM, 64, 56, and FE, which may come out cheaper for them if they're just printing a mass quantity of this board and putting the same stuff on them all. But anyway, nothing uh, exciting here. What about the fan? We can look at the fan and the cooler. And this... I'll go ahead and clean off that 
surface anyway. It, they don't normally print anything on theirs though. So we don't really have a great way of knowing what revision it is. Well, there's nothing on there. Maybe we can just add something to it. No, 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 resist, resist. We're gonna look at the cooler next. So this is the cooler amalgam, and you can see the text from the, the chokes in the thermal pads, it's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, let's get this apart. So what do we need to take out at this point? Ah, you just pull, okay. So you just pull right here, and it'll separate. That makes it easy. I think we're still held on up here by something. Is there a screw I missed or what? No, we didn't miss any screws. Okay. All right, cool. It was just kind of on there tight. So there's the shroud, obviously. Nothing, nothing pretty here. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing to look at here. So that's the shroud. Here's the Team Rocket fan, and let's look at this. So this is a vapor chamber cooler. It's the same one on the Frontier Edition, and it's a copper cold plate. You can see where the contact is. Clearly, we're contacting both HBM and the GPU here. There's no VRAM outside to be concerned about. Uh, that's really all there is to it. I mean, it's the same fin density, it's the same fin pitch, it's the same cooler as Frontier Edition. So that's very familiar to us. And then the next thing is going to be the fan, which let's just go ahead and see if it's Delta still. Yeah, yeah, so this is a, yeah, it's a recognizable logo. Most people know that logo, I think. So it's a Delta. Uh, where's the, there we go, 2.4 amps uh, for the fan, 12 volt fan as usual, so 2.4 amps. So what is that, like 28 watts or something you can go up to? And this is powered through, just before anyone asks, powered through the PCIe slot, not through the eight pins at the top. So if you're monitoring the power consumption of the board by the eight pins, which is what we do, you won't capture the power that this consumes. So you basically add on another 28 watts if it's moving at full uh, DC 12 volts is what that would add. And the same goes from, for pretty much all the other fans as well. So that's the fan. It is actually, I mean, it's not a bad fan. It's just the cooler is not good in general. But that's, that's pretty much always the case with these reference coolers, NVIDIA or AMD. And I think that mostly wraps up the card. OK, so that's Vega 56. Torn down, it is the Frontier Edition. That's what it is. It's a Frontier Edition PCB, it's a Frontier Edition VRM, it's a Frontier Edition cooler, fan, heatsink, everything on a 56, $400 card, and then 64, same thing. So uh, until we see a different PCB design, there's not a lot more to say. We won't be doing a separate 64 video probably, unless, well, unless there's a special project. Uh, but otherwise, be on the lookout for our AIB partner coverage because that's where we'll start seeing unique VRM designs since AMD is using the same board and VRM for all three of their models, which could go either way. I'm not a manufacturing expert, but I would imagine that one option is it's cheaper because you're buying a whole lot of the thin. And if you have a really low volume part like FE, which is a really low volume part, then buying a lot of that board and VRM so that you can apply it to 64 at least would get your uh, help you meet MOQ in the very least. The other end of it is you're putting an expensive board and VRM on a 56, which I don't know if it needs it or not. We'll find out in power testing. Uh, so either way, but in the very least, the 56 has a good VRM on it, the reference one. So if you're going to liquid cool something, there's probably not a lot of reason to buy a partner model uh, when you can buy one of these, liquid cool it, and have a good VRM already. But otherwise, if you're not liquid cooling it, as usual, we suggest buying partner models instead because on NVIDIA and AMD parts, these coolers, not so good. But we already talked about that in the Frontier Edition review, and we'll talk about it again in this review. So that's all for this time. As always, you can check out more on our website, gamersnexus.net, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.